Hello there friends and RC family, my name is Alec from High Noon Hobbies and this time on the channel we're going to be taking a look at two MOA runs on the first MOA course of the first Northern Qualifier of the North vs South RC Crawling Championship 2023. If you're new to the channel, I very much appreciate you checking it out. I hope you will stick around, watch at least this video, see if this content seems worth your while, and consider subscribing. So that then I can say to you, if you aren't new here, welcome back to yet another Friday upload, this time on the channel, back out at Little Moab for the first Northern Qualifying Round of the North vs. South RC Crawling Championship 2023. Of course, Mike with Sons of Crawl providing the delicious breakfast, keeping us fueled throughout the day do want to give a big shout out to all of the judges and competitors who came out for this event over 80 competitors over 130 submissions that's a lot of runs ladies and gentlemen and it couldn't happen without all of you but we recently did a poll on the live stream to see what people wanted to see more of and one response that I got more of than I anticipated was that of MOA runs. You know, we've covered a lot of class two, a little bit of class three, but really not too much when it comes to MOA trucks on this channel. And so that is what we are going to do today. There were a few nasty MOA courses set up for this first Northern qualifying round and we get to enjoy watching a couple of runs on one of these MOA courses by two very, very competent drivers. So we're going to start out with a driver from down south. This is going to be Talon. Uh, this is one of the Armstrong brothers from down in southern Utah, and uh, he is, both of them are very capable drivers. Uh, they, you can tell that they've spent a good amount of time uh, both behind the wheel of full-size rigs and watching full-size and scale rigs do work, and they very much understand the driving mechanics that uh, are in play when you're trying to crawl well. Now, that's something that I think... Probably watching uh, buggies down in southern Utah helps more or less with the understanding of some of these MOA mechanics, especially the uh, front and rear burns, um, just kind of understanding the mechanics of having uh, different rates of speed and potentially cutting off power to different parts of your truck to get uh, different reactions out of said truck. So, town making the easy work of these first few gates, this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. We've got a bonus setup here, which he decides to throttle through. I think that was a good approach to it. And then this four gate. This four gate honestly was... It wasn't as hard or, or we didn't intend for as we were setting this up. We weren't intending for this gate to be as difficult as it was. Um, but it was set with a shafty rig and the MOA rigs actually have a little bit more problem with that uh, with that particular gate than I think the shafty rigs do and I'm not entirely certain why so if you have an idea leave it down in the comment section down below but we'll see a shafty rig go through here in just a little bit and uh, maybe that'll give us a better idea. Gate number five there just a nasty descent um, nothing huge though so with the bonus and then hitting that gate uh, he has squared himself off here at a zero score so Talon's looking not too bad right now going over gate six making that look like a breeze and then a very very sweet pivot turn on uh, right before gate number seven there I don't know if you caught that if you didn't definitely re uh, rewind and watch that because that was a sweet move and then uh, headed down into kind of what becomes a bit of a cluster uh, <laughs> this section of the course is just it's just nasty uh, you've got this gate here which I don't know if you you can really tell but there's a gate down low uh, up against the wall you can kind of see it from this angle here just behind where Logan's standing now that gate is uh, is not placed well for gravity uh, because your truck wants to fall off of this ledge that uh, is kind of to Logan's left hand side now he's standing up on it where we've got that boundary line and the boundary line pushes you really far into the face of the wall on the other side but you've got to try to avoid that because you've got a gate down there that you also 
also don't want to hit. It's just a nasty setup. And then, of course, you got to try to traverse your way back up and over if you want to hit this bonus gate. So, uh, yeah, just just a, just a tough spot to be in. And nonetheless, Talon is now running with a battery hanging down underneath his axle. It bounced off when he took that little, that little tumble down through gate 8. And, uh, yeah, he's just running with it. And, you know, it's just lower center, center of gravity. That's all that is. Uh, headed through gate 8 there. I'm sorry, that's gate 9 there. Um, really, it was getting up to that gate that was supposed to be tough. But Talon made that look like a piece of cake. I think just a bump in the right spot was all it really took. Um, it just was a little bit dicey or a little bit difficult because no one really knew exactly where to make that bump. And that's impressive from a kid who literally has not ever hit Little Moab, or at least as far as I'm aware, uh, this is Talon's first time hitting these lines. Uh, so just understanding, just being able to look at the rock and understand the line you need to take, that is impressive. But coming out after that bonus with a negative 10, so all he has to do is get through this gate number 10 clean but as you can see that is a tall order it's trying to suck that rear passenger that rear driver tire in but that's all good he pulls it through anyways and it manages to have enough width to get himself through ending with a negative 10 at a 405 26 town put in a very very impressive run with the moa and now let's take a look at a shafty here and see just how this compares to Talon's run. Now, I will mention, and this was not uh, information that was given to the competitors at the time, but this course was set up with a truck much more similar to the one that Cameron is running right now than to the MOA that Talon was ru running in that last run. So, the fact that Talon was able to come out with a negative score on that course is pretty darn impressive. Now let's see what Cameron can do. Easy work of gates one and two coming into three. The first, uh, you know, really a little bit more challenging gate, but still nothing too intense. You can see the Shafty making quick work of it, even with that huge underhang. That, again, is one of the reasons that I want one of these trucks. These things are really, really cool, and when you start to see them compete, you start to truly understand just how capable these things really are. Like that. <laughs> Somehow, he managed to make it through that bonus clean. I don't know how, but uh, he basically rode one tire on the ground through there. Uh, however, he did get all four tires through the gate, so we would consider that progress, and we gave him the bonus on it. He, uh, Cameron, took the reverse there going into gate number four you can see he got himself a little bit uh, out of shape just like uh, Talon did in that first run that we watched unfortunately that reverse didn't really do much for him because he ends up back on that uh, driver's side of this gate, which was the intention, but at the very last second, Cameron bounces back over to the passenger side, tapping that gate on the passenger side. A very unfortunate turn of events, but you know, you make do with what you've got. Uh, as Logan would say, you tap the gate, now forget about it, move on. Um, and that's that's exactly what Cameron does here. It just moves on, doesn't even take a second to think about it, goes right down through gate five, making it look like a breeze, coming back up for gate number six here. And this just a, you can kind of start to tell what a steep angle of ascent this is. That is not an easy gate to clear like that. And Cameron just absolutely walking it. Now setting himself up, you can see he's taking this corner wide. Because Cameron doesn't have a front or rear burn, like like the MOA truck does. He's got to take that corner much wider than Talon did uh, as Talon was able to just shove the nose up against the rock and then go into a rear only and uh, kind of burn out the rear, get himself uh, positioned in a more parallel manner to the gate. Now, Cameron really, again, having to go wide here. He doesn't have that, uh, that front and rear difference that he can kind of tune in to make that work for him so he's got to take it wide unfortunately by taking it wide he ends up in a position where it is very very tough to miss that lower gate on gate number eight so he ends up tapping it now headed into gate number nine here the steep ascent uh, just like the moa the shafty also making that ascent look like a piece of cake and cameron navigating that gate number nine uh, with 
with ease, it seems. He, uh, he really didn't seem to have too much of a problem with that at all, which is crazy when you think about just how steep of an incline that actually is. He is practically making those maneuvers on a 90 degree wall. Now, Cameron took a different approach to these gates. If you didn't notice, he went eight and then nine, and now he's headed back for bonus, whereas Talon went for eight and then bonus and then nine. And that's kind of the fun part about these challenges or these competitions is that you can run these bonus gates in whatever uh, kind of order you think is best and in this particular circumstance uh, this is just how Cameron ended up facing and uh, what he thought would save him the most amount of time. Speaking of time we are just passing Talon's time now and we're coming in with a plus one so unfortunately even if Cameron makes it through this gate number 10 clean he's still going to have 11 more points than Talon did going through the final gate but that was pretty dang sweet, I must say. Cameron made that gate number 10 look like a piece of cake, which I really do think that that was a, uh, that was a gate specifically designed for the Shafty, but uh, very cool nonetheless. All right, folks, that is all I have for you this time. I hope that you enjoyed watching those two runs from two very, very capable drivers. Thank you to both Talon and to Cameron for letting me film those runs. I don't run MOA, but every single time that I watch MOA trucks run, I get more and more sold on getting one of these trucks because they look absolutely sweet. These runs look really, really cool, and every time I see them, I want to get behind the wheel of one. But uh, yeah, I hope that you all enjoyed. I hope that maybe you could learn a thing or two if you yourself drive MOA or if you're like me and you just want to apply these same types of tactics or kind of the general principles that they're trying to apply in these MOA runs into your class two or class three runs. I appreciate y'all for watching though. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a like just so that I know that I'm doing something right here. It gives me a little bit of feedback there. If you want to leave more feedback, if you have a video idea yourself or you have some a question that is unanswered uh, that you're just dying to know the answer to leave it down in the comments down below and if you want to see more videos like this every single week go ahead and subscribe to the high noon hobby youtube channel all right we will see you on the next one but until then don't forget to enjoy some scale trailing maybe some hard lines maybe some drone racing or drone flying maybe some ski riding whatever the case may be i hope you enjoy it and we'll see you soon cheers